song? Yes. So you all know that every time I sang that song, I then said, Hello, my friend. How are you today? And I might say something like, Oh, you've got a beautiful smile. And when I say that, all the smiles in here light up the room, even from the big kids. And it's just gorgeous. When I was here at Northland College in my last year in 1988, shows <laughs> you how old I am, um, I had little idea that I was going to end up on television. I basically had no idea what I wanted to do. I had had my first five years in Hamilton, and then mum and dad transferred with Postal and Telegraph, as it was known then, the post office. Um, came up to Kaikoi when I was five years old, and I started at Kaikoi East School. So I went to Kaikoi East, and then halfway through Kaikoi East School, I was at Kaikoi West. And then I went to course to Kaikoi Intermediate and then here to Northland College. And I took a chance, oh, this morning when I drove up, Dad came up with me. My dad's sitting over there. I brought Dad home. I brought Dad home to my, my Northland home, to Kaikoi. He hasn't been up here for years, I haven't been up for a good four or five years either. So it was a great for us to, to drive around Kaikoi, to have a look at our old house in Reservoir Road, our old house in Hillcrest Road, go and see all our friends' places and Tui Street and things like that. Drive around, have a look at the place, and just remind us of our home, of where we used to spend a lot of time. And to walk around the school now, to walk into Mr. Oh, it's not Mr. Castor's room anymore. But to go into Mr. Castor's room and know that they've aired out the room. It doesn't smell of tobacco anymore. <laughs> he used to stand there with his pipe and his American accent. And he would enthrall us. He would have us transfixed. Because otherwise we've got in a big trouble. But he would, he would do all kinds of crazy things. He would talk to us, read Beatles songs out. Or Elvis. You ain't nothing but a hound dog, crying all the time. That was my <laughs> You ain't nothing but a hound dog, crying all the time. You ain't never caught a rabbit, and you ain't no friend of mine. <laughs> so the lyrics of songs are getting much better these days. Right. <laughs> but this place holds a special memory for me, with all the years that I spent here with all the friends that I have here and being in this hall. This hall was a big part of my time here because I used to have production. I was quite good at talking, so I did quite well in the speeches. <laughs> and, and we always used to sing. That's one thing I remember, the songs that we had here in the hall and that sense of community, that sense of being together. Pretty special. Well, I left in 1988 and I went to Whangarei to KCCFM. I think it's now a more event station. And I worked in the copy department. I wrote advertisements. I went out on promotions. I gave away free things in the van. Had a bit of fun. And then I had the chance one Sunday to be behind the microphone. Scared? My goodness, I couldn't believe how scared I was. It's like talking to you now in front of this microphone. I don't think you can see my hands shaking. I've been in television for 20 years, nearly 24 years, but I still get nervous because I want to do a good job. I want to be able to reach you. I want you to hear me. So I want to do the best job I can. So I feel nervous. Radio was exactly the same. It was live. You made a mistake. Everybody heard it. You get locked out of the studio or get stuck in the buddy puppy while the song's playing and it comes to an end. My goodness, you've never seen trousers get pulled up so far. 
But those sorts of things happen in radio. Not so much now, they're all, it's all computerised and the music will just take over. But back in the day, we stuck, it wasn't even a CD. It was an old piece of ribbon that went round and round and round in a little plastic box. And you stuck it in the hole and you pushed out. And if it didn't work, you pushed out again. And if it didn't work, you pushed out. You whacked another one in and that one went across the room. <laughs> but I started in the radio when I was one of the youngest radio announcers at the age of 17. So someone was sick at work, it was a very small business, and they said, you'll do, come over here. And they showed me the buttons to push, and they, they didn't give me a lot of advice. They told me to say my name was Susie, not Sue, because everyone was calling me Sue at that time. For it to count down from 10 to one, because when you do, you start out at 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You've got a nice radio voice. It's much deeper and pleasing to the ear. And they said, and don't talk too much. <laughs> when you're nervous, what do you do? You either clam up or you talk too much. So um, it was a very noisy first airship for me. I just went, blah, 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 and spoke through all the holes. But that was, I had three years in Whangarei and then I went to Auckland. Now, having grown up in Kaipoi, I really didn't see myself staying in Auckland. Big, smelly, concrete mess. I go in one end, the northern, northern end, and go out to Hamilton, where my grandparents were, and I'd go, ooh, look. So I thought I'd have a couple of months in Auckland, and then I'd go and live in Hamilton with my grandparents. But I stayed on the North Shore, and it was very much like Northland. It was pretty laid back, it was nice and peaceful, and I started in radio there. And I haven't left. I'm still on the North Shore. I found myself a wonderful man. I've been with for 24 years. No, we've been our 20th wedding anniversary later this month. And I've been with him for 27 years, I think. So, thank you. And you know what? Actually, a 20th wedding anniversary is something to applaud. In this day and age, it's, it's a lot to to be married. Everything's so disposable. It's like our iPhones. Then runs out the battery, you throw it away, get a new one. Okay, you know but a good thing is worth hanging on to and worth putting the effort into. So, radio there in Auckland lasted for a couple of years and then took some time off. It wasn't really for me, I needed to do something different. I worked in a fabric warehouse. I was down there, I was the only girl in the warehouse, lugging huge big rolls of fabric. It was mostly for curtains and for couches. So the highlight of my job there was lunchtimes on a Friday, because we'd go to the pub and we'd have hot chips with a, a really vinegary sauce on it, it's really nice. Then the next job I had gave me an opportunity to get into television. I was with a record company, so we had international guests come all around the world to New Zealand to do their TV interviews and their uh, radio interviews, and I got the chance to take these people into the radio stations and into the TV stations. And how I got into television? Well, I was at a barbecue on the beach. I got talking to the executive producer of that television show. Now this is one that was before you guys were around. The early bird show. It was all puppets. It was the first children's program on TV3. And the rooster was all felt feathers and plastic beef and he would go, Yo, cock a doodle doo! Yo, dude, have a cock a doodle day! <laughs> oh, yeah. It was pretty rad stuff back then. Back in 1990. But I came on board as the chicken lips. Mm -hmm. When you are the top of a company, you might have a PA. This chicken was the top of the children's program, so we had a CA, a chicken list. So I was, I was also 
the chicken lips in that when a puppet, you guys use puppets? Yeah, yeah it's got the same face. It doesn't matter what you say, it's got the same face. So he could be going, oh cool dude, I've just given you some tickets to the movies. And his face would be like this. And then the guy would say at the other end of the phone, oh that's really cool because my cat just died. <laughs> and the rooster would say, oh I'm really sorry to hear that. But it was the same face. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. <laughs> so I came in as a way to connect with the kids. And the way I did that was when I spoke to the camera, I looked right down that camera and I pretended that there was somebody, a little somebody like you when you were little, at the other end of the camera, sitting in their lounge maybe, maybe if their TV was in their kitchen, I would imagine them there and I would try to make eye contact with those kids, the same way as I'm trying to do with you now. So that you know, <laughs> you know that I'm talking to you, okay? Yes, I was talking to you. And that's what I do now. Even when I'm still on the TV, and I do it from time to time, it's about making sure that you know that I'm on the TV for you. So now I have, oh, hang on. See, I was never head girl. I was never as organized as Lisa. <laughs> Have your list of things you want to say. With me, you guys have to have to help me guide me back onto what I'm going to say. Um, after the early bird show, I had my own show called 3 p.m. and I used to have a whole lot of guests coming. Man, I was 19, 20. I was having fun. I was on television. I was giving away books and movie tickets and CDs and DVDs. This was a very cool job, it was great fun, no pressure. I would rock up, learn my lines, talk to these kids at home, have fun with the puppets, go home again. It was great. With 3 p.m., we answered the letter from children from all around New Zealand. So they would write in wanting pen pals or they might want, um, I don't know, answers to questions. Mum? My mum makes me eat peas. I don't like eating peas. What should I do? So Margaret Mahi was one of our guests. She told them on national television to line their peas up underneath their knife and fork and walk out carefully to the kitchen so mum and dad wouldn't see. We had, we had people come in and tell, share all kinds of stories. But we had three opportunities to address child abuse. Three times, people wrote into me, who I'd never met before, and said, Susie, please help me. I don't know what to do. At that time, I went, oh my goodness. This fun game that I'm playing, it's actually a bit serious. I don't know that I can do this. This is a big responsibility. And I very nearly, well, I did. I wrote out my resignation, and I went to hand my resignation in. And they said, you can do it. We'll support you through it. So for three times, we spoke both about child abuse on television. It hadn't really been done before. That's when it put TV and this media into perspective of what a very special media it is. That you can reach people, you can touch people, you can help them. So when an opportunity came for me to go to Dunedin for two weeks of every month to say, it's our time, you're the silver. I gave it a go. Because I was reaching your mini me. I was reaching you as a, just a little baby. So I went down there for five years, two weeks down there, and then two weeks home. I now have my own production company. We made Susie's World, which was based on the school science curriculum. We learned why the sky is blue. We learned why we have nose boogers. We learned what happens when you eat baked beans. We had a lot of fun. We learned a lot while we were doing it. And I now make a kids' radio show, which has songs and stories. Flip the fire engine and little toots, the funky monkeys, the wiggles. So it's about sharing those cool things that I learned when I was ill with the next generation. And I also have a television program that I make with Brian and Bobby. 
Anyone heard of that one? Yeah. A community constable and a pop it again, a police dog. Yeah, Brian and Poppy. I've got a copy of the resource kit in the car, which I'm going to leave here at the school. I've got some Susie's World DVDs too. So I thought I might leave them in the school. I also have children myself now. I've got a nine-year-old girl and a seven-year-old boy. And when I was invited here to speak to you, they really wanted to come with me. They had to go to school today. Ryan's about to go on to senior production. So she's my mini me. She's blonde with glasses. And she likes singing and making a noise as well. My little boy, he wants to be Michael Jackson when he grows up. He's as white as me. <laughs> the reason I'm here, it's not the chance to come and see my old school. That was really cool. It's not the chance to drive around Kaikoui and see where I used to live. I'm here because of you. I'm here because all those years ago, I was you. Sitting on not your own chairs. We had the long wooden benches. Man, they were uncomfortable. But I'm here because of you. Because, as I can't remember who told me, I had some photographs taken before and I can't see who they are. Is it you? When I talked about the fact that I'm in high heels so I can try and be as tall as you guys. And she said, that'll be me in a few years' time. In my high heels. And I said, you're right. Why not? Why not? Why not you be on TV? Why not you being a manager of a, a big business? Why not you being the top of your sports field why not you being a wonderful teacher here or a school principal of an intermediate school? I was able to quickly sneak into a couple of the classrooms and hear some of the speakers. And as I say, I walked into Mr. Custer's class and it just took me straight back here. The rooms smell the same. They, they look a little rougher than last time I was here. <laughs> But you have such exciting new beginnings just around the corner. And it's not about the buildings. It's not about what's going to happen to the school. It's about what's happening. Excuse me. It's about what's happening for you guys. It's about what's happening in here. It's about you having kiakaha. It's about you having aroha. Not just for the other people in your family, but it's about you. It's about you having respect for yourself and having your dreams. Know that you can do anything that you set your mind to. Okay? Know that you can have a heck of a lot of fun along the way. And maybe you can come and speak to my kids and inspire them. That would be so cool. What I wanted to go, what I wanted to say is, it's your time. Kia ora talofa. It's your time. Your special time of death. It's your time. Your future is now. And it's your choice. And it's up to you. But it can be you and me together. Because these people here, are here for you. All you have to do is ask. You need help with any aspect of school? Put your hand up and ask. You need some to help with your career? Just ask. You need help at home? Just ask. There is somebody. Keep on asking until you get the help you need. Okay? One more song before I sing to you later. One that we sing on you and me. Aroha is a bed if you give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Aroha is a bed if you give it away. It will come right back to you. It's just like a magic penny. You hold it on tight and you won't get any. Spend it, spend it, give it away. It will come right back to you. Yeah. Now I'm looking forward to hearing you guys perform.
beautiful person. So I'm gonna get off now. So I will say, see you, see you later. Time to say goodbye. See you, see you later. I really like the fly. See you, see you later. Time to put you in. See you, see you later.